Hey guys, JWisp here, and welcome to a another survival let's play. Except this survival let's play is unlike anyone I've ever done before, because this is a nether survival let's play. So here we are in our new world, so let's kind of explain what's going on. A lot of people have been requesting this, and I've seen a lot of other YouTubers do this, but this is basically the new Nether Survival Let's Play. Pretty much a normal survival let's play, except the whole challenge with this let's play is that you start in the Nether. Which sounds simple enough, but uh, when you think about it, there's a lot of issues. If you die, you respawn in the overworld, there's really not much food, there's no diamonds, there's no emeralds, there's no coal. It's really hard to find resources, it's easy to starve, and there's enemies at every corner that just want you dead. However, let's kind of explain what we have to do in this let's play. So the progression system for the nether pretty much works like this. You gather the new type of wood to make yourself some wood tools. After that, you gather new blackstone, which is optional to get yourself some stone tools. Or if you want to skip the blackstone, you can just go straight to nether gold. Use the nether gold to make gold tools and gold armor, and then after that you're on your way to start raiding piglin bastions and fortresses to hopefully get yourself some obsidian so that you can go to the overworld and kill the dragon. So that's going to be the main thing for the series. We are going to try to kill the dragon and complete the survival world. It's just going to come with a little bit of an extra challenge. But if we look at my inventory here, I actually have some items, and I have to give credit where credit is due. This whole nether survival thing I've seen a lot of other YouTubers and Minecrafters do. However, the idea of spawning yourself in with a respawn anchor and glowstone has to go to the YouTuber Waddles. To shout out to him, I will link his nether survival series in the description. And pretty much what this allows me to do when I give myself the new respawn anchor is once I make a base, oh, I need to run away, <laughs> or find a place I want to settle, I can simply place the respawn anchor down and then charge it with my glowstone so that when I die, I'll respawn spawn in the nether instead of the overworld. That way we'll be able to keep this entire let's play specifically just in the nether. Now again, I will eventually go to the overworld, but that's not going to be for a while. So we have to start to look around here. I have to be careful because piglins and hoglins will both attack me. I'm not sure, did the baby piglins attack me as well? He doesn't have any weapons, but oh yeah, nope, they're okay. Oh, okay, yeah, they're they're in both directions. They're definitely going to attack me. So it seems like one of my main priorities here has to be getting myself some nether gold because all I need is one gold piece of armor and the piglins will stop attacking me. But that's going to be the hard part because even finding a little bit of nether gold isn't really the easiest thing to do. They lowered the spawn rates, I believe, for nether gold, and so it's a little bit more rare to find. Let's kind of see what we have to work with, though. We have a little bit of this new wood here, which you can replace as pretty much normal wood. So let's make ourselves a pickaxe, and just in case, also make ourselves a sword. Now, one of the hardest things in this Let's Play is going to be dealing with food, and how the heck I'm going to feed myself. Because the only real source of food is hoglins, and hoglins are going to be really hard to take down. The other source of food that I could possibly get is if I had a lot of nether gold and then I then traded with a piglin. However, that's going to be a lot of work trying to get all that gold. So I'm just going to avoid the hoglins for now and eventually try to find some gold and then maybe in the future take them down. I also might hopefully... Oh, okay, yeah, no, there was gold, but uh, that's not happening. Actually, let's see. He only has a crossbow. Let's see if we can take him down. Uh, yeah, no, no, this <laughs> this isn't gonna happen. I have to find nether gold far away from any piglins. Um, oh no, they're still coming for me. How do I run fast enough? I can't. Oh, I don't know. But we might possibly get food from bastions if we're able to raid one. Why are they still coming for, for me or fortresses? Okay, I might be... Okay, this is not good. This is not good. Oh god, maybe I need to put down my respawn anchor. Why are they still chasing me? What is happening? Why? Let me Let me live, please. Please stop chasing me. Oh, nope. He's still ch- Why? Why are you- Mr. Piglin, uh, listen, listen. I'm just trying to start a new survival let's play. You can be the star of the series. You just have to, uh, let me live long enough to get me some gold so you stop attacking me. How does that sound? But <laughs> it doesn't seem like we're off to a great start because we're already low on health 
and low on hunger, and of course I had to spawn right next to a bunch of piglins. I could have taken some time to make my spawn really good and make sure there were no piglins nearby, but I wanted to make this a little more interesting, a little bit more realistic, and <laughs> this is definitely a challenge. But I mean, hey, I was looking for a challenge, I decided to do this series, and uh... I don't know. I might end up regretting this. I just have to figure out how I can get myself down to the ground without dying. I need to be very safe. I need to be very careful. I don't think the zombified piglins will attack me, will they? I think they're still peaceful. I really hope they're peaceful. Let's see. Just gotta make my way down. Okay, we can run. We can keep running. Now, <laughs> I really need to find myself some gold before I can even get food. Or, what I might be lucky enough to find is wait for piglins to attack a hoglin on a hunt, and then maybe pick up the pork chops from the dead hoglin after the piglins kill it. That would be another option for food, and probably my only option for uh, starting off to get food in the beginning here, because I don't really know how I'm supposed to kill a hoglin. It might be kind of hard. I know they're also scared of mushrooms, so that might be what we need. We might need a lot of mushrooms. I believe these crimson mushrooms are used to breed the hoglins, whereas the warped mushrooms... Oh god, we have to be careful. Um, oh god, no, please don't kill me. The warped mushrooms are used to scare them. They're actually scared of them and will run away. Okay, I need to make myself... Oh, I need to be careful. Oh, no! Oh! And, okay, there goes try number one. Well, we already had our first death in the series, but we have to keep going. We're still in the same area. I have to be careful because there's those piglins right up there. Now, if I can get enough nether gold to even make one piece of armor, I should be quite literally golden. Because once I'm golden and have gold on my body, the piglins will not attack me on sight. They'll just be pretty passive. The only reason piglins will attack me if I have gold armor on is if I attack them first or try to steal something from their bastion. So I'll just get enough gold to hopefully- Oh, 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 what are you trying to do, mister? Excuse me. I just have to get enough gold to uh, hopefully make myself some gold boots or maybe even pick up a pair of gold boots from them. Uh, and then they'll stop attacking me. Now I could make better gold armor, except I just want to make myself some gold boots and then focus my gold on more useful things like maybe tools and weapons. Except I'm not sure if that'll be worth it. We'll have to compare because I could make a gold sword and gold pickaxe, which would definitely be faster than a stone pickaxe and maybe do more damage than a stone sword. However, durability on gold items are really low and they might break fast. So it might not be worth it to use gold items. Let's just head over here. Uh, I don't see any piglins. I think we should be safe in this little corner. Let's see. We can get ourselves seven gold ingots. Boom. We got ourselves some pants. So <laughs> we're doing pretty well for ourselves. Let's now make ourselves a pickaxe. Actually, should we? Nah. I'm going to I'm gonna focus instead. Let's do a sword. Because this does four damage. Oh, wait. These have the same damage? Oh, I never knew that. I never knew. Uh, see, look. Look how much of a Minecraft noob I am. I didn't even know that both swords had the same amount of damage. That's so weird to me. Huh. Well, anyways, on to more nether gold. We have to be careful around here. Okay, I see a little bit more gold. We have ourselves some zombified piglins here, but they are always passive. They're nice. But now that we have ourselves some gold boots, it should be a lot easier because piglins won't attack me. However, if you've been keeping up with the update notes, you know that in the latest 1.16 snapshot, they have added piglin brutes, which are a new, more difficult type of piglin to defeat, because not only are they a bit stronger than your average piglin, but they will also attack you on sight, regardless of what armor you're wearing. So I don't think piglin brutes are in this version, except if we do run across one, we have to be ready because they will attack us no matter what. And so I think what the main thing we have to do now is simply collect some blocks so that we can bridge over there and over there. And then we will now be in the basalt delta and also the warped forest. Like I said, some of the warped fungi will be good because they scare away hoglins. And then in the basalt delta, we might find some cool stuff. But... We have to be careful because there are lots of foes around here that will fight us. Not only do we have to worry about piglin brutes, we also have ghasts. And then in certain biomes, we also have to worry about endermen. Now endermen we really only have to worry about if we hit them first or look at them. So I should be able to avoid them. But again, there's still something we have to consider because they could potentially attack us and kill us. 
Oh god, the gas is trying to attack us. Here comes the second death. Oh boy. I'm gonna have to hit it back just at the right spot. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this without a bow and arrow. Oh, no. I don't even have food. Please have mercy. Oh, come on. Give us return to sender. Such a cool enchantment. I love your achievement. I love getting the purple achievements. The sound effect for them is so cool. Okay, maybe the ghast will just fly far enough away that it'll stop trying to attack us. Because if we get hit one more time, uh, we're, we're gonna be dead. Maybe, maybe we should just run away. I don't know. I was gonna bridge over there. I don't think that's the move anymore. Or can I? Can I safely bridge over here without the ghast attacking me? Let's, let's try. If I hear the ghast shoot its little fireball at me, I'll just run away. It seems like the ghast is... Oh, there's another one. No, why are there two ghasts? Oh, no. Okay. Do you forget about me? Can't see me? Can't see me through the lava? Okay, maybe if we just run away like we did with the other one, eventually the ghast will also just kind of go its own direction. Will you, will you stay away from me, please? Maybe? Oh, I think it's coming closer. I don't know what to do. I have no food. This is definitely a lot harder than I thought. You guys should definitely try out this challenge if you haven't already. I thought this would be quite easy. I thought my only issue would be food. I didn't even think about the fact that uh, piglins and guests aren't, aren't easy to defeat. They're usually easy for me to fight because I usually don't come to the nether until I have like enchanted diamond armor. However, we have pretty much no armor. I mean, we have a little bit of gold armor. But, uh, gold armor really doesn't protect me all that much. I think I should really... Oh, he doesn't like that I'm mining the gold, does he? Is that the issue? Of course. Of course! It's not even his gold, he just doesn't want me mining it. Okay, it seems like he's going away now. Still coming. Maybe I can hit him off this bridge. Hmm. Every time I come kind of close, he just comes towards me again. Let's see. Will you attack me, mister? Is there a way I can, like, run past him? Maybe try to run to this warped area? I know I know you're gonna hate me. Oh, wait, he's not gonna hate me right now. Okay. I think, I think he cooled off. Okay, but here we have the warped forest. Now, this is nice. A whole new host of resources to explore. We can gather some warped wood, some fungus to, uh, you know, keep ourselves safe. And also, if we get ourselves some fungus on a stick. We can also ride the striders in the lava to act as a sort of boat, except not a boat, <laughs> it's a strider. They're actually, I think they're a little bit better than boats. They seem to move quite fast. Uh, they have a decent amount of health. Plus, I mean, who doesn't want to ride a strider? I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. Let's see what we can gather here. Okay, we have some vines. I'm just really gonna gather as much as possible because the nether update is still pretty new, and even though I've gone over most of the snapshots and most of the updates, there's still a lot to explore in this update. You know, we don't know everything about the nether update. I'm not sure all the crafting recipes, I'm not sure what I can do, and I'm sure there's a lot I still have to explore. So there is the blackstone area, which would be useful because then we can make ourselves some stone tools and whatnot. So let's try to gather some wood, gather some resources, and hopefully head over there to get ourselves some stone tools. I decided to make a little bridge over here to the blackstone area, and there we go. Getting the new blackstone. Oh, and we actually get the Stone Age achievement. Huh, that's pretty interesting. But there we go, we have blackstone. I was actually thinking in my head, I was like, is there any other food source? And then I remembered, if I really wanted to, I could just kill myself a bunch of times, and every time I kill myself and come back alive, I'm back at full hunger. However, I'm going to try to avoid that as much as possible, because I think, not that that's cheating, but I think it's a little scrubby. You know, it's a scrub thing to do. Uh, <laughs> and I don't just want to kill myself a bunch of times to get food. I want to actually try to make food. Since you can use mushrooms to breed hoglins, we actually are able to make ourselves a hoglin farm. The only thing I don't know about is I'm not sure if there's any way that I can cook the food. I might just have to eat raw hoglin meat the entire time. Unless I somehow find some coal in... Uh, you know, a fortress or something. Oh, wait, I'm dumb. I can use wood. I can cook it with warped planks or crimson planks. So we can get cooked food. I I'm just not used to thinking this way because normally I would be opposed to using wood to smelt something. But I mean, it works. 
I could do it. I could use wood to smelt it. So here we go. Another vein of nether gold. Let's check out how much we have. Oh, okay. There's still some more in here. Let's check out how much we have after this. Because even though gold armor breaks pretty fast and doesn't protect you that much, if I can get a full set of gold armor, it should actually... You know, it should keep us pretty safe. I think it should be able to protect us enough so that we're not going to die from two hits from a piglin. Let's check it out pretty fast because I have... Ooh. Okay, I have a decent amount here. Let's see. Nine gold ingots. Let's make ourselves a chest plate and see what our armor is looking like now. Yeah, I mean, we have three little pieces of armor on our armor bar. I mean, that's all right. It's not amazing, but it's better than nothing. So I think we're definitely starting to do good for ourselves. So what I'm going to do now... Is, oh wait, there's a lot of nether gold I missed. But anyways, let's collect this nether gold. What I want to do now is try to find a little place to settle down. I could actually make a starter house, but I don't think that's our best bet. I think for trying to survive the nether, we should probably just make a little base or hut inside of a hill or something like that. I think that's our safest option. I'm not really sure what to do. I mean, this is this is new to me. I've never really done nether survival before, but I wanted to do this series ever since they announced 1.16, so I'm glad I can finally do it. But maybe make a little hut or a house in the side of a mountain or hill or something, and then in there we can place our respawn anchor. So that way if we die anytime soon, we can actually respawn in a place we know. So let's kind of look around here and maybe find a nice place to settle down and make a house. Alright, so I've been traveling for a little bit, and I think I just quite literally found the jackpot. Over here, we have a piglin bastion, and over here, we have a ruined portal. Now, if you don't know, in each bastion, there is tons of loot and potentially gold block. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to successfully raid this now. We might actually need potions or something like that, just because it might be too hard for us. Or... Hopefully, we can stealth our way around, but there is occasionally even enchanted diamond or iron armor. Also, in these ruined portals, there is usually some sort of enchanted armor, tools, maybe some obsidian, and we can also use this portal to get to the overworld, because it's a nether portal, and it's almost complete just sitting there it's almost a complete nether portal all we have to do is add a few more pieces of obsidian so that makes our job a lot easier instead of needing to find enough obsidian to make an entire portal we only need a few more pieces so, so let's grab a tiny bit more nether rack really fast oh we need to make ourselves a new pickaxe that's all right let's make some sticks and we also have blackstone so let's actually use this blackstone now stone pickaxe and let's make ourselves a stone sword just to be extra safe this does okay this does more damage than a gold sword so it looks like stone tools are going to be our main option even if a gold pickaxe is a tiny bit faster it seems like overall stone is probably the better option now these these boys often give a lot of good loot i don't think though i don't think that i can break a gold block with a stone pickaxe i wonder if i can break it with a gold pickaxe i really have no idea let's see let's use some of our blackstone block off this lava can i use a stone pickaxe this will be our our test there's lots of other gold blocks okay so even though we didn't get it that's okay now there should be a chest around here somewhere with hopefully some loot in it maybe not all of them have loot okay there we go i just don't want to walk on this because my health is already low enough let's see oh a fire charge mending gold boots a silk touch hoe and a fortune three pickaxe okay well that's pretty good fortune three pickaxe will definitely come in handy silk touch don't really need let's use the mending and we also have a fire charge which will be nice because we can maybe get some cooked food that way pretty quickly we can just use that to uh you know attack a hoglin okay i think i think we can use gold to get gold so let's try this out really fast i know i'm blocking this up with wood it's okay I think I can use the gold pickaxe to get gold blocks. Does that work? Okay, it doesn't work. All right, so at least we know for the future I can't really collect the gold blocks. That's kind of a shame. I also wanted to mention I have leather and pork chops. Uh, I don't know. I guess I found the corpse of a hoglin or two. But I forgot they could give leather. So we can also get leather armor sometime in the future, which, I mean, isn't that good compared to gold armor? I think gold armor is a little bit better. But leather armor might have better durability i'm not sure i know they're both pretty bad armor pieces but it's better than having nothing we do have this bastion here which i'm very tempted to raid but i know if i try to raid it now i'll die so let's just head right over here and we can make this little area over here 
our base. Let's just make a little doorway here. We can actually put a little door on it, and we can call this place our home. Oh, that was that was pretty quick. Let's uh <laughs> let's use our golden nuggets really fast though. And see how many gold ingots we can get because I can probably get myself a decent amount of armor here. Okay, there we go. We can get ourselves a full set of gold armor and we have extra boots and it actually gives us a decent armor rating as well i mean we're, you know not as good as diamond armor but i mean we're doing pretty well for ourselves i think this is a pretty good start to the series and uh hopefully as we get some more resources it'll get easier yeah it'll still be pretty easy for us to die however if we die in the future at least hopefully we'll know where our loot is and we won't die uh you know we won't die as much i think our main issue is really just going to be food but we might find food in the bastion and we can also make a hoglin farm it'll just be a little bit of a challenge all right welcome everyone to a mtv cribs where we show off the coolest houses in the world and uh here is j wisps new nether base uh it's, it's quite beautiful it's probably one of the best houses i've ever seen you know he's got a crafting table over here he's got a chest and uh he's got a door he's got a crimson door and uh that's about it but <laughs> anyways i was thinking Let's start to uh, settle down a little bit. Let's put our respawn anchor down and we can charge it with our glowstone. We now have four spawns, not quite nine lives. And there we go, we got the achievement as well. So this is a respawn anchor. And if you don't know, you can use it to respawn in the nether. You make a respawn anchor with crying obsidian and glowstone. Let me show you guys the recipe really fast, I believe. Uh, I, maybe? Oh, I don't have Crying Obsidian. But anyways, it's Crying Obsidian here and here and then Glowstone in the middle. And then you just right-click on it with Glowstone to charge it. And it has up to four charges, which means you can respawn up to four times. However, if you start to run low on charges, no big deal. Because all you have to do to get more charges is to right-click on it with more Glowstone. And it seems like I'll have plenty of Glowstone because we are in the Nether. So we should pretty much be all set. But anyways, guys, that is going to be all for this episode. I really hope you're enjoying this new series. I actually found this to be pretty fun. I thought it was going to be a little boring at first, and uh, I also thought it was going to be a lot easier than it was. This was definitely a challenge and put my Minecraft thinking skills to the test. But we have a pretty good start. We got ourselves full gold armor, which is better than most normal survival starts. We have enough stone tools to last us a while. We have some good items from the ruined portal. And we're also right next to a huge naturally spawning remnant, which could potentially have tons of loot. There's also still many spots of gold near us, but we don't even need the gold right now. So I think this is a pretty good start. Again, the main challenge is really going to be worrying about food. I'm not sure what we're going to do, and uh, hmm. it's, it's going to suck, but we're going to get through it, and we will beat minecraft starting in the nether but anyways if you enjoyed consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel this is jay wisp and i will see you guys all in the next